Oh, you sure can. We'll call to order this Muncie Parks and Recreation Board meeting on uh, today, Tuesday, October 18th. If everyone would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, and, and to the, the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Chandra Parks. James Lutton. Here. Shannon Powers. Here. Mark Irving. Here. Brad Marshall. Here. Uh, we uh, do not have uh, minutes from our uh, September meeting to review, so those will be added um, to the agenda for our December meeting to review those minutes. Next on the agenda, we've got the uh, superintendent report from uh, Mr. Carl Malone. Good evening, board. Good evening. Uh, before I get into the uh, superintendent's report, I'd like for the uh, men of faith to come forward and give you a few remarks about the event that took place at uh, McCullough Park. If that's all right with the board. Be great. Yep. All right, Mr. Anderson and your team, uh, you guys can come on up, and make your comments. Good evening. Thank you for this time once again. We uh, really appreciate the opportunity to be here, and we very much appreciate the opportunity you afforded us to use McCullough Park for the Calling Men to Pray gathering on October 1st. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I say that because both Julius and I have uh, been getting phone calls, emails, texts from men uh, saying that how meaningful it was for them. Uh, we had about 125 men who registered at the park, and we know that there were at least 25, 30 men who came and went, you know, uh, and that, that's very fine. That was very fine. And so it was just a delightful day. The weather cooperated, and uh, we are just so grateful that that park is there and we were able to use it and that you allowed that. So thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to say thank you as well, man. I, me and my partner, we spoke over to, to end violence. And, you know, and I think it's, it's very critical that we understand that it starts with our health and our mental health, you know, and it's just, it's just a blessing and an honor to even be able to be standing where I'm standing and coming where I come from. You know, I come from that lifestyle. I just did 20 years in prison. So to be standing here is an honor, and I appreciate y'all, man, and I definitely appreciate these brothers for what they've done, man. And I thank you, and I look forward to working with y'all more. Appreciate it. Thank you. I thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak. Um, just wrote a couple things here. Uh, this is just more, more testimonial. If there are those that, that pray, there are those that hope. Otherwise, why would we pray and believe that our Heavenly Father is listening? What we had was, a, of course, a solemn assembly of men that were gathered to learn about issues in the community and take them before the Lord in prayer. Um, some of the issues include, included problems with our school system, problems with homelessness and violence. Uh, men in the community, uh, they were educated through this event. Uh, and of course, we, we didn't just stop there. We considered deeper issues that uh, were the root cause of some of these issues like fatherlessness and poverty. Uh, the event, you know, uh, focused on praying for the issues, but we didn't just stop there. We were, we were educating people. Uh, about different programs and opportunities to serve in the community. So it was just, it was a really valuable event, kind of, uh, oh, you know, eye-opening for a lot of us. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks. It is a privilege to be in front of this council and share with you what happened uh, when we were there that Saturday in the park. A lot of men get together to do a lot of different things. But what was special about this and what doesn't happen often is when men get together and they pray. And we prayed specifically for this community, the people in our community, and we lifted up the people in, in our community. And we know that we serve a God that answers prayer. Yes. And through all that prayer, we know that 
it will bring about change in the lives of people in this community. And so we hope that we can continue to do this and maybe do it again with the council's approval. We would like to do this again sometime. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Daryl Balfour. I'm a lifelong uh, resident of Muncie. Been here all my life. I've retired from Winchester. But I, I uh, too, agree with the rest of the guys. You know, it was a wonderful thing to have this. And it, well, we were glad, I am glad personally, about how you guys allowed us to use the park uh, for this event. It was uh, awesome. My role in this event was uh, for park, helping to get people parked and uh, to make sure the park was cleaned up after we left the park. And so we left it like just like we got it, you know. And, uh, and we just wanted, every, wanted you guys to know that we were very appreciative of everything that took place. And I, I, I anticipated it would be a lot larger, but it doesn't make no difference that it wasn't as large as I thought it was, should be, because it was meaningful and those who came enjoyed it. And I think the word is getting out there, and if we ever have the opportunity to do it again, I think it's going to be much better because Muncie needs help right now with all of the violence we have in Muncie, and, and there's a lot of anger and people anymore, and I think these things like this is going to help people to find some calm within themselves. You know, so I think it's a good thing. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, my name's Clark Tudor, and um, I was in charge of the hospitality, which um, we had several um, places donate food to us, and uh, cabin number six was just the perfect place to have this at, and McCullough Park was the perfect place to have this event at, and as I share, along with my brothers here, um, you could feel God move in that place like I've never experienced before. And, and the setup of everything with the bleachers and, and the stage and everything was just fantastic. Um, matter of fact, while I was there, um, I was, we had set up meetings at uh, Red Apple Cafe and um, we had, um, I'd gone through the crowd there and a gentleman had stopped me and he says, I want to tell you something. He says, I remember you from Red, App Red Apple Cafe. And he said, you handed me a flyer. He said, had you not handed me that flyer for calling men to pray, I wouldn't have ever even known anything about it. And he said, I just want to thank you. But folks, I just want to thank all of you for letting us have the use of your park and of cabin number six. And uh, just God bless you all for for letting us have that privilege to be there. Thank you very much. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you. And just to close out, I'm Julius J. Anderson. And uh, again, just wanna thank each and every one of you. A special thanks to the park superintendent. He worked with us, uh, his staff worked with us. They, they helped us set up <clears throat> and we left the park better than what we found it. Meaning that it wasn't in bad shape, but we made sure every piece of paper was picked up we made sure that inside that the toilets and everything was working perfectly. We, we made sure that everything was, was in order. Just as last month when we came before you and the Iron Man thing was going on, that didn't bother us. You know, they had their event, we had our event. And I just gotta say, you know, I kind of dispute what he said, 125, it was more like two something. I seen wives dropping their husbands off, <laughs> dropping their young men, uh, their sons off because they want them to be a part of something better than them and b bigger than themselves. So again, I just wanna thank you and Mr. Marshall <clears throat> as the president I know I can't give you money, but I can't give you a card. So I made for the whole thing. So <clears throat> I wanted to do that. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> and I know that uh, there's other uh, members, I mean, individuals are here for other businesses and stuff, and we just don't want to take it all. But I just want them to know this because we're going to come again because yeah. right now we're getting phone calls right now. Say, hey, look, what can we do? And how can we be an assistance? So we just got to plan that out again. So, uh, uh, so when you see us again, maybe you say yes. But uh, for um, on behalf of all of us, um, 
this was really good for us. It's good for the city of Muncie, and it's good because had it not been for you, it wouldn't have happened. You made it happen. So that's why we wanted to come back to show you our appreciation yeah. of what you're doing. And, and a lot of times you don't get the credit, but we are living witness that what you did for October the 1st was something great for the city of Muncie, and we hope to keep it going on. So thank you again for your time and uh, decisions you made on this uh, board for the last time. Thank okay. you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Thank Anderson. Thank you, kindly. All right. Thank you. On that same note, I want to thank Carl and his team for all his work that he's done out at the parks. <laughs> um, they're uh, coming along very well, a lot of improvements out there. And uh, this really shows uh, some of the non-traditional events that we can hold out at the parks. So if there's other groups out there that are looking to use the facilities, um, it's not just for softball and baseball and throwing a disc golf. There's um, shelters and facilities out there to be able to use. Um, so take advantage of that. Um, and then we will continue on with uh, Mr. Malone's superintendent report. Um, just to echo those guys, they definitely uh, left no trace. Um, you couldn't even tell they were there on Friday night setting up until they left on Saturday. If you went back out there, you couldn't have told there was a group of large men that size in terms of the condition, the way they left our park. So we, we definitely appreciate that. So on with the, um, the sup uh, superintendent's report, I'll start out with uh, Tui Pool. So Tui Pool, we um, and the Cardinal Swim Club have started painting and making uh, preparation on behalf of the uh, board of directors Community Foundation of Muncie uh, Parks received a check for uh, check number 7376 in amount of $19,254 uh, provided by the Harry and Janet Kisselman Fund deposited in our account uh, downtown City Hall. I uh, want to give a special shout out to um, our board member, Shannon. She worked really hard in preparing, putting the grants paperwork together our board for allowing her to spend time to, to work on that. And then the last, the uh, Cardinal Swim <laughs> Club, yeah. who is volunteering their time to uh, paint and continue to make preparations on our small uh, pool and our big pool as well. And so we should be good to go come spring of, of next year with a nice pool. So I just wanna say thanks, Shannon, for, for all your work on that. Uh, Jack's Park is up next. Jack's one of those parks in our community that has been kind of uh, not a whole lot of attention has been given to it. Uh, maybe the neighbors there wasn't as vocal as they are now with trying to provide a nice park for those for those neighbors. And so we've already started to make some uh, minor repairs. We made some repairs to the electrical box. We made some repairs to the actual basketball court uh, to include pickleball lines along with basketball so it can be used. Uh, used uh, throughout the community for those that want to play pickleball and we've provided some painting and there's a lot more uh, things to come playground equipment walking track things of that nature will be added to Jack's Park so we look forward to 2023 seeing what Jack's Park is going to look like uh, beautification of parks we continue to do uh, what we have been doing which is pruning cutting mulching making repairs on picnic tables and benches uh, things of that nature and then any other thing that comes to our nature by way of phone call uh, on something that may be unsafe in our parks. We try to pay attention to those things as well. Uh, as far as our programming, uh, Muncie Parks and Recreation Fall and Winter Program um, is ongoing. Soccer uh, is taking place right now as I speak. We meet on Saturdays. We've had about 150 to 200 kids uh, taking, taking part in that program. Mm -hmm. A lot of parents support. Uh, the biggest problem we got there is parking, yeah. uh, trying to provide parking, which that, you can look at it two ways. That's a good thing. Then it's also a safety concern, making sure people can get in and out of uh, that area. It's kind of tight when you got that many uh, kids coming and going. But it's, it's been great. I think we got about three weeks left. Um, and then we're going to be partnering with the Boys and Girls Club to, uh, to do some sign up for uh, elementary age group, uh, basketball and volleyball. There's been some, some acts for that. So that's open right now. We don't have a target date, it's just been conversation and I'll provide the board with some information as far as registration and enrollment uh, as it relates to uh, fall and winter, winter uh, youth sports. 
And at this point, that's all I have. If the board's got any questions. We got any upcoming events or anything we need uh, to discuss or approve? I do program? have. Uh, I don't have them in front of me, but I can get those and come right back up. In fact, uh, one event that I think the board talked about last year, I mean, last month, was the uh, Southside Neighborhood Association. Uh, I think Courtney's here, and she can come up and speak on behalf of the uh, Southside Neighborhood Program coming up. Do we have any other questions for Carl? Uh, before we move on to event approvals. No. no. All righty. Thank you. Straight into this. Thank you. Hi, Courtney. Oh, I saw this. Yeah. Thank you. It's great. Hi, uh, my name is Courtney Marsh. I'm the president of the Southside Neighborhood Association. Sorry, remember closer? Okay. Thank you. Um, we are working with the Parks Department to try and get just a fun event out there for a lot of our community members. Um, as I've passed out, there's a little flyer that we've been passing around um, on Facebook and in person to try and encourage people to come out and just have a great time. Um, upon some of the conversations that we've had with some of our Parks Department friends, um, they're trying to encourage people to use the parks in the best way they can. And so one of the best ways that we thought that we could use the park would be to invite as many people out to have a great time. Um, we're gonna play basketball and kickball, and our local officers have been graciously giving us some of their time to be able to come out and play with us as well. So um, if anyone has any questions, I'm available for that. Any questions regarding the basketball and kickball event? I, w I would just say that perhaps in the future, get it approved by us first before it's advertised. Okay. Obviously, I did ask about that when we were having the conversations, if we needed to submit the documentation like we normally would. Um, but because we're working kind of together, we didn't feel as if we needed to, but I will do that from now on. Um, obviously, you're going to have security there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In that swarms, one hopefully. of our boxes. <laughs> right, in swarms, I hope. Okay. Any other questions? Is this a um, fundraiser of any sort or no money exchange no. whatsoever? No okay. money exchange whatsoever. It's a free event for anybody that wants okay. to come out and just have a good time. We're trying to promote the fact that a lot of our youth um, and even some of our young adults, uh, most of their interactions with our Muncie Police Department and our Delaware County Sheriff's Department is usually not in the best of light, whether that be that they're personally getting in trouble, they're encountered in a crime, um, police come to the house to deter whatever the situation may be. Um, and we don't want for that to be their only interaction with our officers because they're people just like we are and we want for them to see that. We want them to be able to have, come out and have a good time. We will be trying to gift out some of the balls um, that are being donated to us to some of the kids that are going to participate um, at the end of the, the game. Okay. Um, but there is no money exchange happening. And this is funded by the Southside Neighborhood Association? Yes, it is. Okay, wonderful. Good. Any other questions? Not. I would entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. We look forward to seeing you there. And please share with all your friends so they can come out too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Um, we do have an application for an approval of Emerson Doll Park Halloween Party. Uh, is there anybody here on behalf of this app? No? So the group is asking that we uh, approve them to have an uh, event there at the uh, Emerson Dog Park. Uh, a lot of dogs and stuff, if you've been, been out there, they visit that park quite a bit. And they're just asking that we uh, support and allow them to have this event. I don't think that there's much from a park department standpoint other than what's out there that they're asking for. Uh, Who's organizing that, Carl? Uh, the name at the bottom of the app is Kelly. Um, it's hard to read. Uh, look like Kelly Stewart. 
there's a phone number here on the application if you want to call uh, as well uh, to get any other particulars. Uh, but from a, just from a park standpoint, I don't think there's much they're asking from us, maybe a couple uh, totes and maybe make sure there's a porty pot out there or something like that, which we can provide that. Uh, other than that, I don't see anything, any reason that we would have any concerns for, for the event to take place. Is the water still on? <laughs> the water there is probably off from what I, what I know, but we can make some adjustments uh, to provide water there for We most definitely want to make sure that's, that's the case. So okay. this time of year is, is you know, we're starting to t yeah. cut our water off and events are popping up. So that might be something that the board and I need to sit down and talk about uh, those events because it's kind of getting late. And you can see the weather changing outside already. So we just never know between October and November how cold it's going to get in, in this part of the part of the world. So, but we've always kind of started making you know plans to shut water off shortly after Labor Day uh, weekend. So, uh, but that's something the board we, we can talk about whether we want to extend those uh, dates or whatnot. What was uh, the date of this event? Uh, October 30th for four hours, 12 to 4. If the water's turned off, we could maybe just make sure we inform Kelly Stewart of, that the water's turned off. Yeah, and we could, I'm sure it's just a valve, it's just a shut off valve there at the, at the water line, inlet line. And uh, if we have to go back in and uh, put some new antifreeze in or whatever. Will that, there be vendors there? It's not showing um, any vendors. Okay. Nope, not showing any, no vendors at all. Okay. All righty, thank you, board. Any other questions or discussion on the, uh, I guess the dog Halloween at Emerson? No. Questions? Uh, if not, I'd entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. All, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right. Anything else, Carl? No, that's all. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we will move into the Prairie Creek Report with uh, Dustin Clark and Ashley Wright. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Well, I think probably the first thing to start off with is the success of Iron Man. So this is probably the first formal meeting that we've had since that event. Yeah. So um, that event was uh, attended tremendously. Um, literally thousands of people. Um, almost more than a thousand participants. Yep. Or, yeah. It was around a thousand. Around a thousand participants. So that was pretty amazing. Um, it it went off better than normal. We had uh, both the regional director there and one of the national people was there as well, uh, and they were very very pleased. Um, they made comments that <laughs> this was put on as well as what they expect in other major cities. So we were pretty excited about that. Um, Rehab of Beach uh, happened just before the Ironman event. So uh, both at the end of this year and the beginning of next year, you'll see uh, rehabbed um, 220 ton of fresh sand brought in to uh, improve the beach and extend that. And then as we kind of talked about last time, uh, we are proposing to move forward with a zero cost to the beach entry next year. So. Now it will be free, but it'll also be updated and new and nice. Yeah, we can thank Iron Man for that. That was part of their grant program, giving us the money for the sand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. let's go. Good. 
Um, other than when it comes to our employees, we're getting ready to start pulling out docks. So um, October 31st is the last day for people to have their boats off the docks, um, just as normal. So I'm um, working on winterizing the beach house, winterizing the campground after October 31st. We have our Halloween um, get together. Matter of fact, this weekend on Saturday, we're going to have some t-shirt tie-dyeing and different games and stuff like that. The Friends of Prairie Creek are are uh, partnering with us to make that event happen so um, I am I'm excited for the partnership that we have and hopefully more next year we can you know figure out movies and that kind of stuff um, more often and make it a little more plan more planned events for the campers and something for the kids to do with that we have one major uh, submission which would be the uh, proposed uh, prices for 2023 um that's we'd like to submit that for discussion and then uh revisiting the rules uh that we submitted last time and then there are some updates um, from what you received there are some yellow uh highlighted sections those sections are either new sections or corrected stuff uh, so we want to bring those two items to your attention and see which one you want to discuss first I, I guess uh, before we get into those, I, let's talk about the I'll shuffle your schedule there, your agenda a little bit. The floating docks, um, what's the status on those and forecast there? They, they are, they're, yeah, they're, they're already. Um, they would like to set up delivery. Yeah, because I guess the um, Easy Dock, they are ahead of schedule. They're planning on getting them in January. Um, they'll actually have them, I think they said starting in November. Um, we are not going to have them on our property till probably January, um, but they're ready. Yep. So um, that'll be something exciting that we'll have for next year. Um, that'll be one third of the docks that, of the wooden docks will be replaced. So one third plus the remaining. Um, Mayor Ridenauer, uh had worked with us to make a commitment to uh, get into ADA compliance. So last year we installed six ADA uh, compliant docks. This year we're moving forward with the remainder. So. One, and one other, it's kind of a small change, but it will make a big impact. Um, on the launch piers, we will be um, extending them out and putting some fingers mm -hmm. out on them. So uh, people have an actual spot to load um, and unload. Um, that will help the people that are that have the piers close to those. Um, plus, I mean, it is they that slows up the launch a lot when people are waiting to unload and load people. And mm -hmm. um, I think that will help a lot for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Oh. Uh, next, we can talk about the rules. Um, as Dustin mentioned, uh, this is him and Ashley and I uh, spent some time this afternoon, reviewed some of these items. Um, I know you sent these out as well to the water company, um, the sale club, uh, Friends of Prairie Creek, some of the other interested parties. Um, I think right now uh, where we're at is uh, we need to review these changes and updates um, as a board, and I think we need to interface directly with you guys. Any changes or things that we see um, in here? Um, I know I, I thought it looked pretty good. Um, made some minor changes regarding formatting and positioning of some of the rules, but overall looked pretty good. Um, and then my goal, I, I certainly we discuss here as board, would be to have this finalized and ready for full approval in our December meeting. So, so certainly know what we can talk about now, or if we need a separate rule meeting between now and the December meeting, we can do that as well. Uh I have a question. The yellow highlighted, <clears throat> uh, you probably put this in the email, but I forget. Is that just new revisions? Yes, it's either a new revision or a correction. Okay. Something was either misspelled or we changed, we moved the wording around, or there's something about that line that's different. So yeah, than it's. Yeah, the, the original that Aubrey sent her. Yep. And was, were there, um, so the water company looked at this? The water company has been sent to the water company. It's been sent to the Muncie Sailing Club. It's been sent to the Light Horse. It's been sent to the Hunt Club. It's the Friends Group have a preliminary copy. 
There were changes that were made today. Those will have to be reset. But did the, sailboat? I did say the okay. sailboat club. Okay. The sailboat club, um, the, the friends group got a preliminary copy. We'll get them another copy today. Um, and so we're waiting for feedback from all of those stakeholders. Yeah, we haven't really. Uh, uh, we got one kind of prelim email from the Commodore of the Sailboat Club. Um, he thinks that pretty much everything will be fine from his initial glance at it. Um, at it, but he they just got all new a couple new officers for um, their board as well. So um, they're going to all look over it again. They literally yeah. just elected them, I think, on Monday. Yeah. For, so their their board switched so several of them that had seen it weren't the new people that got to see it so um i have informed them and i would very much encourage the board to support this they have a unique uh partnership contract with us whereas although they are surrounded by prairie creek and part of prairie creek park per se they actually do have somewhat of a separate contract as well it, there's like um an add-on for their area with the water company lease so there's yep. a little they have a yep in our lease they have a call out and they have a separate notation so we uh, i told them and i'm asking obviously for continued support their rules should be with ours but be as an addendum yeah. because they you have to be a member and then that comes with its own things and they are have their own entrance and their own rules about what you can and can't do that it's not permissible to the general public so we would like to add whatever they propose to the parks board as an addendum but to be inserted with ours as well i think that'd be great makes good sense keep it all uh, all together i know historically it's kind of been a little bit here a little bit there and a little bit uh, nowhere yeah. um, this is a really uh, a good direction to compile all of the bits and pieces and tribal knowledge that's been uh, historically had. Um, any other questions or discussions we need to have as a board here? I think what I'd like to see um, is if we can get all the um, revisions back to, uh, to Dustin and Ashley um, by the 1st of December, and then if we can update compile revise and have that ready um, by the 10th um, that gives us 10 days before our december meeting um, mm -hmm. that seem reasonable for you guys and for us as a team yeah. uh, this copy and what would be our most update copy um, if others would like to review that is that available at the office or do we want to release that until we're ready uh, what's our our vision there board I, I have always been okay with releasing it. So yeah. um, okay. I, I say if we're, if we're thinking about changes, I've, it's fine for everyone to have an opinion on it and, mm -hmm. and to allow them to say what they want. So I don't mind to let the newest one go out. Okay. Um, yep. that, but obviously at the end of the day, it's up to you. But for us, transparency yep. wise, I think it's smart. Because yep. at the end of the day, everybody has to follow these rules. So. Yep. This, this, the goal would be to have this to go out in the new packets. Yes. Mm -hmm. As January 1, you're signing a new lease or you're having a new event or you're having a new partnership or renting a new shelter, something as of January 1st, these are in place. I would rather have everybody on board now and then no by God's Yep, yep, by <laughs> and then everything is mm -hmm. fresh from so we are fine with that. Our original deadline was getting to you by November. So we are we're thrilled if you guys want to take longer, not a problem. As long as we can get it out by the first of the year, I think that would be good for us. Great. Excellent. Well, if, if anybody wants to review these, uh, reach out to Dustin or Ashley or the office of Prairie Creek, and then comments, questions, concerns can either go through the Prairie Creek office or the Parks office. Either way, we'll make sure that those get compiled and reviewed. Um, uh, next, we can talk about rates a little bit. I see a sheet here uh, that you guys presented and proposed. Uh, I know I have talked with you guys a little bit, uh, maybe with some of the other boards, maybe not quite up to speed on these. Um, we've, I guess, let you guys share thoughts and where we're, how we got here and what this looks like. Yeah, sure. so obviously th since the last rate hike, um, I mean, inflation has gone through the roof and, and 
we're a victim to it as every as everyone else so um, the last rate hike um, we paid our part-time people 10 10 an hour um, now we're paying them 15 so that's 50 percent higher than pretty much than what we were paying them so you can imagine I, I did a calculation today and this is just the six months we're putting in peers and pulling them out um, with the with the crew that we need counting full-time and part-time um, we are spending $75,000 in labor alone okay. that doesn't count the wood that doesn't count the waiters um, and the waiters are not cheap they're like $300 a pair nuts and, bolts yeah. washers drills impact drivers yeah. fuel for so the truck can idle so that they can have a warm place at snow and ice and a lot of them they end up putting the their gloves up on the dash anyways mm -hmm. to dry them out and they have two separate pairs of gloves so they don't I mean you you just can't help it yeah. just <coughs> before we go into any of the other reminder details this is a great time to remind we are not a normal city entity we do not get any tax funds we do not get any so we live off of whatever we make so if we have to pay more out that's that's money that we don't have for anything else right. so and then obviously electric is up i mean it is and then gas alone for our vehicles that our guys drive which compared to other departments we don't use as much because they don't have to drive a whole lot but they still do so. heating oils up everything yeah. yeah so um yeah and lp oh, are, our, yeah. our lp rate has i mean we get a good rate being the city but it's doubled for this year so um i mean that's just where we're at with it so um the rates we have put in kind of reflect the um, increase in everything else that we have so um, we we debated and obviously we're gonna I think we're gonna start moving to uh, dumpsters that's what our plan is is to move to dumpsters next year for the campground um, and not have trash cans all over the park um, the problem you know that the problem is we are we are borrowing a trash truck from the district every week we have to go and have someone go get it and uh, bring it back and then we drop it back off to them um, it, they have been wonderful in letting us do that but at the end of the day that it it will be the, about the same amount if we just have a dumpster and and not have the labor cost that we have because we usually have about three to four people run trash and it takes a day day and a half to do that non-holiday yeah so um and then we'd have to worry sometimes i have to call them in on holiday weekends and come uh, at least switch toters out and all that because the launch gets busy and there's just no way around it We already have four trash cans out there and it overflows in one day. So um, Now when you're talking about uh, the toters and the dumpsters yeah. toters two dumpsters is that for? Um, the grounds as a whole so you're talking the the launch and the campground and yeah all the areas there We'll keep the trash cans and stuff like that for special events um, And that kind not of, to be put out. Yes, and won't be they won't be your normal having trash cans everywhere um the state parks went to this many years ago where you you bring carry your, in carry out yep exactly so um it's not something that's not that's abnormal for a park to do um so when it comes to the campers that's that's what we're we think that will be the most economic decision to continue and and the fact a brand new trash truck is astronomical and we don't we can't afford that mm. so um so with that being said um we talked about um, do, you, do you want to get into individual do you want to go line by line do you want to talk about things as a whole um i guess line by line why don't we start with the seasonal how it's going up 450 dollars yep yep so uh currently uh individuals are being charged for a seasonal lease um one thousand dollars we are proposing that that go up to 1450 there are some more notes to that and I will just get them out of the way right now uh, seasonal proposal includes trash and cart in one lump sum seasonal campsites will increase $40 annually new signed leases must be current on all debts uh, to the city of Muncie so there's several things in there and I'll break a couple of them out so 1450 is still near the bottom um, I don't think it's dead last, but I, I kind of remember that we are still, we're not even in the middle third. We're, we're still on the bottom. So this is still not pulling us up off the bottom, but it is enough to get us by. Um, we were going to, we've discussed long time, um, and many people have said, well, we'll pay additional fees for trash, or we'll pay additional fees for this or that. Instead of adding additional fees, we are removing the trash fee, 
and we are uh, removing the cost to have a golf cart. Those are now, everybody gets those. That's, you sign up, that is your. You, you your, will, you, yeah, you'll still be required to carry the insurance correct. and fill yep. out the, mm -hmm. um, the sheet, but um, for the permit, and you'll still have a sticker, um, but that will be included in the fee for, for the first one. Mm -hmm. If you have a second one, it would be 100 for the second. Yep. Okay. Um, we are proposing an annual increase. Um, lots of places do this. When you get your Verizon bill, you know that next year it's gonna go up by X percent or it's gonna go up. We are well below that. We're, we're talking $40 out of 1,400. So this is pittance compared to what everything else goes up. But if we keep a consistent increase, at some point when the board feels that that's the right amount, then this, the board can vote to suspend for one season, two seasons, or however long the board feels that that's the right decision until we get to where we're supposed to, and then when you need to let the rate go back up, don't vote to suspend it, and then the, it'll increase $40, which will help us cover inflation every year. There's costs and associated, so um, that would be at the board's discretion on when to stop it and then when to start it again. Um, we've had many discussions about this. Um, having a campsite at Prairie Creek is a privilege. This is a luxury item. Um, if somebody is in a position where um, they owe amounts of money to the city proper, um, either through taxes or dramatic amounts, that is, then, then we need to have those people pay those bills. You need to pay your bills before you come out and buy a luxury item. We can't have you racking up more fees if you haven't paid your previous fees. So that covers most of those. Um, and then that kind of explains how we got to that. Um, I, I will be honest, I was actually higher on that. Um, and we've, we've negotiated down to, to 1450, but 1450 is where we feel will get us enough to kind of put us back on our feet and have money to do infrastructure changes, which is sorely needed. Dustin, when was the last time of a um, rate hike? Yeah, so there's gonna be probably two within the last 10, 12 years, and I'm gonna have Ashley. Yeah, I'm, if I, so I'm trying to remember the exact years, but I believe it's 2019 was our last one. It's either 2018 or 2019, um, but I'm well, thinking 2019. And what was the amount? Um, we raised the campers $100 and the docks $50. Um, and then the one before that, um, it was right, actually no, because I had to redo the leases. So no, we didn't have one before that. I was thinking that I had to redo them and change the price, but I didn't. So, so. that's the only one since I've been, I've been here for, since 2016, and that's the only so. one. That's only one in that time, time, and you went up $50, and you went up 100 I think so when Sorry. if if I, and I may be wrong this is just off of memory but if I remember correctly when McShirley was in she uh, raised the fees and then when Mayor Tyler came in he lowered them again um, so and I don't think they really got messed with a whole lot after that I know when I first came in it was like 900 for a city resident so. Comments, questions, concerns before I move to the next line? I guess before we get too far into the sticks here, um, I think what I'd like to see is that we introduce these today. Um, I've done some additional research too. I want everybody else on the board to have a chance to do their research. I'd like to see this as an introduction. Okay. And, and then uh, the goal would be yet again to vote on this in December. Um, so that way we can release this um, with the new leases coming out in the next year. That'd be good. Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. You want? Yeah. So do you want us to keep going? Yeah. Or? Okay. We'll keep on going down the okay. list. Yeah. So um, what do you well? You at least mention that. You already did. And then okay. Uh, the next the next line item is golf carts. Currently, they're paying twenty five dollars. We're giving that first one for free. Um, and then the line below that is uh, storage, uh, commonly called winter storage. Uh, currently, that's one hundred and fifty dollars, and we would like to move that to two fifty. So, and that is storage for. We and that's end up being fifty bucks a month. Yeah. Is what we so mean. November, December, January, February, March. That's only fifty dollars a month. 
Um, that is an extremely reasonable rate. Is that mm. a voluntary? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. There is no requirement. How big whatsoever. is that space? So like, they leave it at their campsite. Oh, at the campsite. Yep. Okay. They move. Yep. Yeah, they don't have to move anything. Just mainly okay. clean up the extra stuff that's not on the winter storage form, but the camper, the deck, that stuff can stay. Stuff needs to be clean and tidy, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving to the next one, uh, primitive camping, uh, 1204. No, it's 1284. It it's 1284. 1284. That should be an eight. Thank you. <laughs> 1284, and then we would like to move that to $13, and that does include taxes. So that would be a round figure. <coughs> so when they go to pay, it's $13 even. It's not $12.84 with pocket change or anything. Um, moving down to the next line, uh, cabin. Cabin rental fees are currently $50. We'd like to move those to $75. Again, taxes in, uh, include the proposed is in the proposed price. RV camping is currently uh, twenty five sixty eight. We'd like to move that to thirty five dollars, and that is I will point out again that is still well below average. Um, those are nightly rates, correct? Those are nightly correct. rates. Yep. yep. With what? Yeah, it's thirty amp electric and, and water. Mm -hmm. um, moving down to the next subsection, docks. Uh, moorings are currently 250. We would like to move those to 300. Current piers, which we have labeled as wooden, the wooden piers on average are costing about 425, 450. We would like to move that to 500 during the transition years. And then the new docks, which will be 100% replacement, hopefully in three years is the goal, um, starting literally in spring with one third replaced all at once. Uh, it's uh, 475 and we're gonna move that to 625. All other fees and passes will remain at the same price. So when will we, um, when will we be just all floating piers? The goal is three years. Talk yep, we're doing, the okay. goal is a third, a third, a third. Okay. So during the transition time, the wooden piers are still there, still available. We don't, okay. we still have, <laughs> it, they cost us so much more than they did just a few years ago that we have to increase where we, we will start to see a loss of revenue on that. Um, so while they're there, they're going to be in transition. So that's the fee that we feel like is appropriate. And then we'll move to everybody floating piers where will the, the third go in at are you starting a one and that, the, this that's first it. part will be pretty much all in the north cove. Cove, like the north cove um on the west side of the bridge yeah. um and then um the ones also yeah. at the windsurf are going to be switched as well so there won't be any on the windsurf there won't um other than the floating piers there won't be any more wooden docks um and then also all in the cove over there so off the main lake, so just south, so in the cove of North Shore. Do you have another one of those packets, Dustin, I don't. from last month? Uh, not on me. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's what that's we what, last month. Yeah. Okay. Last Thank week we went, okay. we went through that. Yeah. Okay. But again, and we don't mind repeating it. And again, that would be the north side of the new South Shore campground. Okay. Again, protected in the cove to start with. The docks that we are pulling from to fill those, some of those are in that area. Some of those, these were determined by Deaton's docks, some actual engineer people, uh, our park staff. Um, the, some of these employees have been there 25 plus years and they pointed out, these are the ones that we have the hardest time dealing with. Yeah. Those are the ones that we're moving to the new. Yep. Okay. More questions on those. So when okay. people get their packets, they'll know whether they've got a wooden pier yes. or a floating pier? Yes, yeah. yes. That's, that's why we want to get it all done now and then. My, my actual plan is to try to get, um, I want to get past all this and all that. And then um, in the next week or two, um, Brittany and I are going to kind of go through what docs we're moving and, and tell everyone, at least send them a letter and say, hey, this is what's going to happen next year for you. This is what it's going to look like. Um, and that kind of stuff, so at least people know, and it's not just hung on them for the invoice. Yep. That's 
We've asked for render at drawings, so we will send them like, hey, this is what your new doc will look like. Here are examples. Here are the proposed locations. You are one of the customers that is likely to be affected. Here is your likely doc. Here is your likely doc number. Here's where you, here's your formal notice that, hey, be on the lookout. This may be your January packet. Our plan is to not offer people if they don't want a floating pier to try to go back to a wooden pier, um, just because we know we're going to upgrade them all. So it's when we send out a thousand notices, it's hard to mm -hmm. figure out what's available and what's not. So having that is just that would that would create a lot of havoc. So um, if you're eventually all going to be there. So um, if if you just don't want the flotation dock, then I would just we'll just put on the availability list and and you know go from there i like the graduated price pricing for going from wood to the to the other it looks like the floating docks are going to be a clear improvement mm -hmm. but are. since not everybody will get them at once i like the fact that those who can't get them yeah. won't have to pay for it until they get them yeah. so yeah i don't remember if this was uh <coughs> dustin you and i one of, one of our conversations or we talked about in the meeting uh last month these docks we're looking at uh, the new floating docks will have a gate some type of secure yes. structure that we're not going to see yes non-dock owners at Correct. the docks yeah so just as with what we hope to do with the gates so that is a leaseholder area that is not intended for public consumption use mm -hmm. 24 hours a day 365 days a year that's why they leased that spot same with the dock holders they often face people coming out and fishing on their piers, setting up coolers, setting up the, the rod holders, you know, camping out. And, and you wouldn't think that that would be a problem, but for a lot of people, that is a problem because all of that fishing, the, the boats, especially by the sailing boat club, especially around some of the, the pontoons with open tops, fishing line everything gets hooked in there people's trash gets left then somebody steps on broken glass or whatever mm -hmm. it it becomes a hazard we are attempting to avoid that hazard by since that is a almost a i don't want to say private it is a leased space with a contract now we are securing that area just as we secured the campground with gates what is a mooring Do you so want yeah so basically at the end of the day it's they're up there with all the other docks up on the shoreline because um, I know our moorings are different than like Brookville's, but um, it's basically two two metal poles with one piece of wood down the center. You don't have access to from the to the side of your boat. Um, you get on from the front. So there's a walkboard out to the front of your boat, okay. um, and each boat ties up to each side. So if you can imagine uh, the docks as they are now, you walk up. There is a dock in front of you, and there's a boat on either side. And you walk down the center, and you get basically on the side of you open the door you get on the side of your boat moorings do not have that option they have a two by six or two by eight stood on its end it's just enough for you to tie your boat off to keep it from floating away and then you try to get on from the front is there a public place for people that do want to fish and is there a public place for them? Really, a, a lot of the park is public, so that that's what we're trying to create with getting these floating piers and where they're community style, because then that opens up all that shoreline, because you have one walkway that goes out there, as opposed to the 10 all the way, and it's hard. 10 on for each people, side. Yeah, because boats are right parked right beside each other all the way, where this way we'll have hundreds of feet in between, okay. um, and there'll be a lot more room for people to fish. So, so I, I can't do all the math but I can help walk you through it. So you gotta think a boat is about eight feet wide and we have a couple feet between each boat so they don't touch. But they are stacked literally right next to each yeah, other the yeah. entire distance. Yeah. Now 10 on either side of every dock will be missing. Right. So all of that is brand new bank fishing. Okay. All of the people that are like, man, I, re I used to fish here. There, were di there, is, yeah. there is now fishing and as we continue this process, we're gonna increase bank fishing by 33%. Okay. And then next year it'll be increased by 66%, and then 99.9%. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, so we have accomplished our goal come springtime of ADA docks. So now we are moving toward an ADA fishing pier. So 
2023, we'll start that process and submit something to you guys, and then we'll have an ADA fishing pier as well. So you'll have they'll have a fishing pier, and they'll have they'll have a fishing pier, and they'll have docks. Thank you. I think I know the answer to this, but I'm, a question on storage. Mm -hmm. Storage, much like uh, the seasonal campgrounds, is it's not a right, it's a privilege, or it's a convenience factor that we offer to anyone as long as it's available. Storage for? Storage, I assume, for campers. For campers. Yep. campers on the, on the pricing. Yep. Yeah. yep. But reasons why it might not be available would be maintenance. We still have to reserve the right to clear things if we need to to get work done yep. uh, and those kinds of things. Is yep. that correct? Yes, correct. And, and as you alluded to, we we would like to increase infrastructure sustainability <clears throat> capabilities. Um, I, I think that we've got some really good plans that have been looked over by some really good engineers and really good contractors. At times, we are going to have to move to not offering winter storage so that we can go in and trench and dig and electric lines and water lines and clean up roads and make sure that there are some individuals that have luxurious huge campsites and they pay the exact same amount as somebody who just can barely open their door and and doesn't have as much real estate as others we need to equal those things out so a campsite that costs x is equivalent to the next campsite that costs x and x and x and x um, there are inequalities out there and we would like to fix those to do that we won't always be able to offer winter storage Infrastructure takes time, bulldozers, trenchers. Yeah, equipment. Equipment needs space to work. Any other questions for Dustin or Ashley regarding the proposed rates? Like I said, this is introduction only. Um, we can review this over the next month and a half, uh, two months actually, um, for our December meeting. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Mark kind of led directly into the next item, uh, winter storage and repairs. I think we've got some scheduled uh, for this year in mm -hmm. conjunction with open items, um, uh, camper uh, identified items, and also the arborist. Anything you want to share there? Um. Yeah, we, I mean, there's several sites that we'll be dealing with the trees. Um, and then there'll be sites that we, um, there is some, you know, rule violations that we're dealing with. Um, there is some that we need to check the water and electric on some sp spots that people have um, had some concerns about. So um, I think, what was there, a list of maybe, I don't even know how many we yeah. had, but um, it's not a whole lot. So. Um, but I have the list if we need them here too. But um, I think I did email. I know at least a couple of them have the email of what I sent to everyone. So, as I say, the, the last list I saw it looked like it was roughly a dozen sites that had, yeah, had open I'm, issues. Yeah, I think so. I, I just didn't want to say the exact wrong amount here. Yeah, I think it does have. Oh, I think it's 11 is what I end up counting, but yeah. 11 out of 187? Mm -hmm. 11 out of 187. Have water issues? No. Or? No, 11 out of 187 are going to be asked to hold off on winter storage okay. no with the intent storage. that most, if not all of them, can move back in. Not offering winter storage does not affect whether they can move back in or not. Okay. Has no tie to it. Doesn't matter what anybody has heard, doesn't matter what anybody has said, not getting offered winter storage is not tied to anything else. Okay. So if we have to go in and do tree maintenance, or if we have to go in and inspect something, or if we have to go in and fix part of a road, that has nothing to do with anything else. Got it. Yeah. So if someone's asked to, to move and they aren't given winter storage, then not only will it not affect them going back in, but they'll go into an improved yes. lot when yes. they go back because yes. that's the whole point is to make improvements yep. in safety or security. Correct. Yep. <clears throat> okay. 
Any other questions for Dustin or Ashley while we have them here? Any events for approval? No events. Um, there was just um, a couple of things I wanted to address after um, this, but um, no events so far. Okay. Do you want me to stay? No. I don't mind. Um, I wanted to um, address some of the things that have been said or done um, by some people that um, are, I don't want to say it on the record, that um, there's some stuff that's not true. So um, I brought every little bit of documentation that I can of what is true and what's not true and everything I've said and they've said. And so um, that's available to anyone. Um, thank you. I, I'll first address the haunted trail. Um, I have actually not really um, specifically spoke with Mr. Morris about the haunted trail at all. Um, he has not contacted Dustin or I. He has not um, done any emailing, anything like that. Um, I will be quite honest. We had a meeting with the Friends of Prairie Creek. Um, so it wasn't just us and his wife in the meeting. It was other people. So, um, And it, this question was not on their agenda, but um, his wife did ask me if we were going to have a problem with the trail. And our exact words were no. Um, what we did ask is that electric's up to code, and if that was un, if if that if he wasn't able to do that, and that wasn't a problem, um, that we'd want to partner with him and get that corrected. Um, and you know, and she did mention to me that um, she knew that we had problems with one of the cords going over a road, um, and that they I had just. Oh, I, I don't want to cut you off there, Ashley. No. But I guess um, if we're going to go there. The Haunted Trail um, never had an event proposed to the Parks Board. Correct. It was never previously presented to the Parks Board. Correct. It was never an approved event by the Parks Board. Um, i talking to you and Dustin. Uh, I think you were willing to work with them. I, I believe this Park Board has been very generous on events um, and would have been willing to work with yeah, any group. Absolutely. Um, so that's... I'd, I don't want to belabor that issue too much is that yeah. we never had an event to approve or disapprove. Correct. Yeah. So I, I and that's kind of where I'm getting at is at the end of the day, like, um, I know there have been some posts made that um, there was too many restrictions and the, the management has stopped the trail. That is actually not true. Um, not only did we offer to partner with him and cover the cost of getting everything upgraded, um, but we also tried to work with the Friends of Prairie Creek and a lot of the campers felt uncomfortable because of the divide in the campground that this has caused. Um, and they so they feel uncomfortable trying to help us do that. And, and that's fine, and I don't mind, but um, it's obviously not something we can take on ourselves um, as we are dealing with everything else with our grounds. So um, I just want to make sure and um, let everyone know that, that that is, there's a lot of untruths that are being told there. And um, I do have an email from one of them letting, you know, saying that they heard my words exactly. Um, and, and she said, you know, um, that uh, he has a right to say he's not going to do the trail. And, and that's correct. He does. Um, but the, the message that he's playing is that we stopped him from doing it. Um, and prevented him from doing that, and that's not true at all. Um, it would have cost nothing for him to get the event permit. It would have cost nothing to him to make sure that electric's upgraded. He is he is an electrician by trade, so he knows what that entails. So um, I, that is just something I want to make sure that it's known. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's out there that's bothersome. And I do, like I said, I have like two reams of paper of all kinds of posts of Stuff that I, I mean, it's getting to the point where this is just blatant harassment. This is only one copy of everything. So you can see it's nearly every day. Every day since the spring. So it wasn't just about the haunted trail. So these, I mean, that's, and I understand that, you know, you may not see eye to eye with me, but at the end of the day, if we're going to put improvements in the park, let's do it right. Let's do it safely. Um, and, and I think that's just where I'm at with it. So I just want to make sure that everyone knew those kind of things before we get into any other conversation, because I feel like there's, there's even been emails sent to the mayor telling lies about me saying that I do things on my off time. Um, that was completely untrue. So I've been slandered so much, 
um, that I'm really at my I'm, I'm at my max with it and I don't think it's fair for any city employee to, to have to deal with that and because this is adult bullying is at the end of the day that's what it is so um, and I, I wouldn't want my employees to deal with that and it's not fair for me and that's why I understand why campers don't want to do what they want like you know to stand up to this because these are people who are adult bullies that's it, it that's the end of it thank you Ashley yep you Apologies, board. Uh, as I was going through my paperwork, I saw one other event permit. And is there anybody here from the Bridge Community Church? Looks like we got one. Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize to that for them having to sit through. Um, but as I, I thought, this was just a regular facility request form, and actually, it's um, an event that wants to take place October 29th uh, for two hours. But I'll let the young man come up and, and share. They, have you guys actually seen the application or not? No. Okay. Just a verbal. So basically, it's um, an event on October 29th from 6 to 8 p.m., um, open to the public, open to our church. Um, at Cooley Park, it's a kids' costume parade, free food, pumpkin activities, us showing that it's great pumpkin, Charlie Brown, stuff like that, just like normal, you know, Halloween type of activities with food and candy and costumes and all of that um, in our application form we ask for the normal stuff like extra totes um, access to porta potties if the bathrooms aren't open I know are the bathrooms actually open now so the porta potties will be used for that um, security we were going to um, just rely on our elders and our leadership if that was okay with everyone um, is there access to power there we we're asking so we, we have that um, Basically, I mean, it's just a small event. We expected 50 to 100 people. Um, we were trying to handle most, most if not all the details we could possibly can, like within our church, and we were partnering somewhat informally or formally with the Southside Neighborhood Association. So I had these little like handouts that were created. They haven't been distributed publicly yet, but I can give you guys. Yeah, if we could get a copy, that'd be great. <clears throat> yeah, there's just like little hand, hand cards. Oh, yeah, four of them. That's fine. You can yeah, pass can, them out that way. We can share that. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have another one? I only brought four. I should have like. I'll get one for okay. the bills for the record. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Have you guys had this event before? We have not. So, uh, by way of context, our church is moving to the neighborhood in the next couple of months. So, we currently reside in Cornerstone. We're moving to the south side, uh, the former St. Paul's United Methodist at 26th and Macedonia. So, it's close to the or Southside High School and Grissom and all of that. So we're just kind of having like a community event that's as much for the community, if not more for the community than it is for our church. But we expect, you know, hoping for a 50-50 split between people from the neighborhood and church members. We have a pretty small church in general, so. So it's a church event, there won't be any vendors? No, no, no vendors. Uh, we'll, we'll provide the pizza, the face painting, whatever else, the costume parade, whatever else it is. It's, we'll have like a projector up there showing the on loop the Charlie Brown, which is like an hour or something, so it's a two hour event. Okay. So no vendors. Got it. We hope security with our eldership and leaders and all that is enough. I don't know. So the uh pumpkin smash? Yeah, I don't know. Is it actually a pumpkin smash? Um there were ideas about it. Um we're partnering the people who own our uh, building is Youth for Christ, and they have experience with pumpkin smashing, I think, or something. So it's not going to be like a 600-pound pumpkin drop from like 100 feet or something like that. I think it's just like a small little activity. I don't know all the details about it, but you guys have any other questions? That'll all be cleaned up, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah we plan on cleaning up. We'll have the totes there. We'll do the cleanup ourselves, and then the parks can pick the totes up the, whatever, whenever they do the next day or whatever it is. So. It'll be pretty dark. Um, so what are you planning on for lighting? Is there lighting there? Yeah, so there's lighting there. It's going to be near the bathroom facilities there, and um, if we have access to power, if we needed to add any supplemental lights, we probably could if we had to. Any additional questions? If not, I would entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. 
All in favor signify saying aye. 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 Same sign. Thank you. And you guys that need my name and all that I didn't actually introduce myself. Yes. Okay. Uh, the name is Zach Bow, and my address is 2909 West Ashland Avenue. So I actually signed on the public okay. input already, so which I probably don't need now. But oh, that was a good intermission, a good break. So um, glad that it happened when it did. Um, but I would be remiss if I didn't stand up and talk about um, some of the incidents that have occurred over the past year. Um, and there needs to be some recognition and um, defense just to make sure that it is goes on record. Um, Miss Wright has performed above and beyond any expectations uh, in her role and without flaw is simply amazing in her job um, we could not be more lucky to have her she has endured a tremendous amount of legit harassment um, harassment that has taken a toll um, both mentally and physically um, and i know this is probably her she is she can be a little mouthy, but I'm telling you, she, she wears her heart on her sleeve. And this is probably hard for her to hear of, of how good she is, but how much abuse that she, is, she has taken. Um, this truly affects the park. She has dedicated her life to try to make that place better and try to get a good foundation, a good set of rules. Um, and a tiny few have made, made it almost their mission. Um, I don't know if, if that was entered into records or not, there are hundreds upon hundreds of comments, emails, things that are being said that are paper reported. Not all the other hearsay, but paper reported. It has gotten to the point where threats have been put in writing that she has had to endure, that the park staff has to endure and work with and around, to the point where the police have become involved. And again, not sharing anything that can't be found out through public record. We have had to alert the authorities of the kind of harassment that has happened. We are there to work with people. We will not always agree. That's fine. We can still work together. There is a positive way to address somebody. There is a negative way. Over the past year, it has highly gone negative, And it couldn't have gone to a more undeserving person. She is not deserving of any of this abuse. Um, she is not an elected official. She didn't campaign. Um, she earned her position through de hard work and dedication. And she has not received enough praise. And she has received a tremendous amount of hardship for trying to do the right thing from a few people. Again, there are literally thousands of people that come through that park. Thousands. And we have a small population of people that are unhappy about a few things that when looked in the light and when looked through a legal lens are common sense. So I would like to take this time to please recognize Ashley for her hard work and dedication. Please be aware of how much she puts into this place and how much we are lucky to have her. And I wanted to go on record literally in a board meeting saying, we could not keep that place running without her and Junior. And shout out to Junior. Junior's always awesome. But, so thank you for your time. Thank you, Dustin. Um, appreciate all you, the staff out there. I know Ashley and Junior get called by name frequently uh, for their appreciation, but we've got a whole crew out there that, that does great work. Um, we have had a history of um, loose ends, maybe, is the best way to put it. And we're working on cleaning some of these up with these rules and formalizing everything uh, not only at prairie creek but at the parks as a whole um, so it's a tough road uh, people don't like change uh, a lot of the time but we're trying to make everything better so. next on the agenda we've got old business um, got a few items on here i don't know if carl any of these really need discussed i don't see the skate park guys here today um, so i don't think we've got any new news on the skate park um, that continues to progress 
The fees review, uh, we do have um, the list of fees that we had discussed previously. Um, in an effort to try to not drag this out any longer than we have to, I think we can add that, <clears throat> excuse me, to our fees and rates review uh, that will be in the December meeting. Um, the grant, grant fund spending is next on our agenda. I don't know if there's any new items to discuss there. Um, I know we've had some allocations out of that grant uh, for items. Um, kind of roll through all these, I guess, unless, Carl, you've got anything else. <clears throat> well, what I'll say is I will forward the board an update on the funding <coughs> on far as the funds that have been spent through the bond. That way the board will have it. I'd like to have some discussion uh, once you guys get it uh, uh, as well, especially during the time right now that we're trying to figure out uh, how to move forward with our spending uh, and with all the other accountability stuff that needs to happen. Uh, I think it'd be a good time for the board and I to sit down and kind of see where we're at with uh, the bond monies and what all still needs to get done this year uh, as we roll into next year. So I think that's what I would say as far as uh, what's been spent down so far and then what's what, what we can get done between now and the end of the year. So. Would you like us to plan a meeting? Yes. In the parks office? Yes. Okay. Yeah, just plan a meeting so we can sit down and okay. brainstorm and talk a little bit about where we're going the last two months prior to end of the year and then moving into the to the new year. Uh, the other item that uh, I didn't get on the agenda for today in old business is the uh, the park, uh, the pond off Tillotson, uh, also known as Till Pond, named to be determined. Um, there's still some design preliminary work moving forward on that. Um, we should see um, decision from the federal uh, grant uh, early next spring. The Tui pool slide. Uh, Shannon, you want to share the work that we're doing at Tui sure. out there? So uh, the initial quote for the slide repairs um, was approximately $10,000. So I wrote in the Kitzelman grant $10,000. But when the um, the representatives and the, the workers that came out to perform the uh, initial work the grinding and sanding found that the um, our initial quote that work would be waxing and polishing wasn't sufficient. It would make the slide more brittle, cause more problems. So we um, had agreed to negotiate the price uh, to do the next set of work, which would be an upgrade to twenty thousand dollars. So if there's a deficit in the grant that I um, applied for versus the work that was approved or work, work that was actually accomplished on the uh, slide and um, so there's a ten thousand dollar deficit I wanted the board to um, think about approving using the 35 some ten thousand out of that thirty five thousand that the mayor gave us from the um, from the bond money to be able to go towards that extra work that had to be done. So it's 10,000 out of that 35,000 to cover the work that needed to be, to make our water slide, our public water slide, uh, you know, safe for people to go down for the next 10 years. So. I think that's, uh a great, uh, maybe even the exact reason that um, that bond money was allocated to TUI was for upgrades and improvements like this. Um, I know you had mentioned there may be some additional bonds, or excuse me, additional grants, grants available. Um, I'd encourage you to still apply for those, but I mm -hmm. would. Uh, I will. Uh, I guess entertain a motion to approve um, monies from the. Um, the bond to be allocated for the slide repairs. Um, also, just want to go on records to say that that slide was the original slide that was put in under McShirley's administration, which was about 2008. Mm -hmm. And if you have uh, visited our pool, you saw there was a lot of imperfection that needed to be corrected uh, at that slide. Yeah. 
And so um, I'm really happy that we got a chance to, to get on it and go, you know, and make the repairs. And Shannon, you have that picture of the yes, slide. Can you show? Oh, yes, sir. So that's, that's yeah. the finished product of what we're talking about. And uh, that's what uh, our community is going to get a chance to see uh, when we open the pool up next year would be the work that was done by slide experts uh, to put us in, in a better place with safety and welfare. So that slide repair work has, was well overdue. Yeah. So it's so. 20000 versus buying a new slide, which we got quotes for 150000 Yeah, 150000 so. for a brand new slide versus 20000 So that's where we're at. I move the motion. Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Great. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. Dustin, I got you on here again. You got anything else to share? You covered all your bases for today? <laughs> I don't think I need anything else. Uh, new business, we have uh, McCullough Park baseball field uh, schedule update. Uh, looks like that's you as well, Carl. Yes. <clears throat> um, Richard Ivey wanted me to just share that um, the, there are, the irrigation system is working properly. They have made soil repairs. Uh, they've talked with Ball State. They got Perry Irrigations out. They have their equipment on our site. We have the water running uh, throughout the day. Uh, so it looks like uh, we should start seeing grass growing uh, in our outfield. And so um, the timeline that we have is a couple months that they're hoping to be able to see the outfield uh, coming along. The, we were out there today uh, trying to figure out the lighting situation between the electrical company and uh, the power company and the lighting company that Richard has chosen. Uh, there's, a, there's a date set uh, next week that they will begin to start the construction uh, on the lights. So it looks like everything's coming along. Uh, the power source has been uh, located the work will be soon to begin on on making the power power uh, source that we need for our lighting, and then the grass is coming along. We have the system in place for that, so we we should see uh, a finished product there here here real soon. Okay. So, Richard, just wanted me to give you guys an update. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. We already talked about the uh, Tui slide repairs. Next item, uh, any action items or event approvals uh, additional that need brought before the board? Uh, seeing none, uh, we'll move into the public uh, comment section. Um, looks like we've got several names on the list. Um, in respect for time and others, uh, please make sure that we stay civil and uh, try to keep your comments to three minutes. Who's first on the list? Michael, and oh, I'm Michael Anderson. He was the one that spoke. Zach uh, Bo, he spoke. So oh, it's Linda. Nope, no, Mike made... Anderson was on the list, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, no, that's... Mr. Anderson? Yeah. Go ahead. My name's Michael Anderson at 302 West 23rd, Muncie, Indiana. I received a letter the 11th of this month. I guess I'm one of the lucky 11. Speak into the mic, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm one of the lucky 11. Uh, I've got a problem with this, and I'm sure you're going to, there's going to be 11 people who have a problem with it. But uh, I also own a business that I, I, it's called Prairie Creek RV and Pontoon Storage. I have 50 customers that I have to have the boats out before November 1st. 50 customers that I have to get out. I also work full time. It's going to be impossible for me to get what you want done here by the 15th and do my other obligations. I don't understand why it had to be sent now because I've been camping there for 20 years. I've paid my rent at, at the beginning of the year every year and I've paid my winter storage at the beginning of every year till this year. This year. So apparently they didn't want us to pay this year our lot or our storage rent because this was planned. Now, why did it take six or seven months 
to create the letter to us. It's not even signed. The brave person that made this out is not even going to sign it. That was me. Yeah, but why didn't you sign it, Dustin? Because it says Prairie Creek on there. Yeah. I, I represent Prairie Creek. All I'm saying is I need to understand I can't do this. I can't, it's impossible. I've been camping out there 20 years. I'm one of them guys that he talked about that's got a great campsite. I've got a big deck. I've got handrails around my deck. I've got pavers. I mean, it's going to be virtually impossible to try to remove all that in 15 days or 30 days or whatever. I mean, even 15 days after if I get the boats out in time. And I just, it just can't happen. I don't understand. I don't know why we wouldn't give them bigger notice on this. And first, I don't know. I don't have any trees. I don't have any stumps. So I don't know why I'm having to move. Nobody around me, I've talked to them, is moving. Just my camper in that spot. I think you're talking to the board. Well, I was hoping for input for you. You're the one that's having me move. We'll go up there on the right Yeah, I think you're addressing the board. Okay. Well, like I say, it doesn't say it's, it's just a generic sheet giving you a numerous things of what, what they're moving you out for. I haven't been told why I'm having to move out. And it's going to be a very big expense for me to do it. I'd like to know why. And then there's a lot of things I'd like to know, but we don't have time to do all that. But uh, Is the bigger issue for you the time frame? That the time frame is a real big issue because of the 50 boats. Okay. These people want their boats, and I'm sure Dustin wants the boats out before November 1st, too. Okay. So let me, let, I just want to make sure I understand clearly. So the, your biggest complaint is that you got the letter now, and it's not enough time for you to do what they're asking you to do. I got the letter the, the 11th, yes. I got the letter 11th. And, and that's the only conflict. And also you don't know exactly what work needs, needs to happen at your campsite. And right. I mean, why is the reason that it has to move? I mean, if it's something simple that I can remove something, that they can do it. But I don't know anything needs done there. Okay. I really, be honest with you, if you want me to tell you the truth, I think I'm being harassed because I keep coming up here to see you people to complain about my electric, which I've been promised new electric for many, many, many years under a different administration. And my electric's still bad. When I asked Dustin to come and look at my camper to show him how the electric is down in the red on the meter, he refused to even come. So it sounds like you've got an electrical issue that needs to be addressed and looked at this winter. Is, I, I don't. The only way that the electric issue could be fixed is you got to have to bring different power to it. But if you're going to bring power up here for the electric issue there'd be more than my camper would have to move. I, I don't mind to address his if he doesn't let, know that I tell him about the specific sign. Let, let's, uh, I, I suspect we may have additional comments and feedback along the same line. So let's work through the public comments and then if we decide as a board we need additional questions from uh, Prairie, uh, Prairie Creek, Dustin and Ashley, we can ask those questions. Right. That's fine. That's fine. I'm just, yep. I'm just trying to explain. This oh. is not much notice, and I've got a lot to do. If you guys want to come out and look at my campsite, you'll see it would be a monstrous job to do. M Mr. Anderson, uh, what, what would be a reasonable time frame, or how much time do you think you well, would need to Well, I don't know. It's according accommodate. to the weather. It's going to be according to the weather. You know, it's snowing today. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to be according to the weather. I work, I work a full-time job. I work three or four hours every night on the on the pontoons and getting the storage ready and then i'm going to be working i'm till the end of the month getting them all out and that's not still winterizing them cleaning them up and getting them in storage so i'm going to be probably the end of november before i get done with the pontoons i can understand your frustration have you um at all went to mr clark and miss wright about how the time frame's not feasible for you? Have you tried to work something out with him? I, I did not go to him because me and Dustin's, okay. I'm not one of these guys that she's got notes on. I, I have never went to him to complain other than when I asked him to come and look at something. All my complaint has been right here on this platform. 
Okay. I just recommend that be the first place since that's where the issue is. They can well, probably work with you. My experience with doing that, ma'am, is is he doesn't pay no attention to me. He just blows me off. Okay. I guess one of the things that I think uh, I suspect is going to come up is the timeline. Um, and maybe you don't have an answer, and maybe some of the others might. Uh, is it is it two days, two weeks, two years to have stuff ready to move out, or what what are we looking at? Um, I, if you'd ask for more time, what would you ask for? Uh, probably first of the year. Okay. okay. So, like I said, well, I'm sure we're going to have additional comments, and I think we're going to have to have some board discussion here. Um, before we close so. okay I'm uh, yeah. I'm up here I come up here I'm trying to do this nicely yeah, yeah I do. you know what I mean Thank I still you. don't understand why but yeah. I'm still trying to do this nicely hopefully Thank we can you. get it worked out Thank you Thank you Mr. Thank Anderson. You. next on the list Linda Shoemaker Oh, hello. I'm Linda hello. Shoemaker, and I'm here to say how blessed we are to have a beautiful place as we mind, have. Please? Thank you. To have a beautiful camper, campground. Everybody's so nice and good. And you, you, just like Ashley, everybody's blaming her, but Ashley, you can't please everybody. The place is very well taken care of. And I've been out there since 1998, and I got a trailer and a boat. But everybody needs to work together and get along and be blessed to have a beautiful place. And Ashley and Dustin does the best they can, I think. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Mr. You. Shoemaker. <clears throat> Dorothea Meadows. Hi, my name is Dortha Meadows, and I just had a couple questions or things I wanted to address. This is what you gave address. me, correct? You yes, ma'am. I only have four copies. We had somebody else show up. <laughs> we can share. Thank you. Okay, what she's passed out is the winter storage that is usually sent out to everyone. And if you see down at the bottom, it says, if you are not storing any belongings at Prairie Creek, please sign below. Okay, we were one of the ones that was asked to move out so our campsite could be inspected. But uh, we don't have anything to sign saying that our belongings were going to be removed and so I was just kind of wondering you know when when are stories you get this to sign if you're removing your belongings but not if you're asked to be removed there's nothing to sign so I was just wondering if there was any certain reason for that The way I, I read this document, this is a, the off-season storage agreement right. offering storage to a camper. Correct. And if you sign, you are requesting storage at Prairie Creek and will pay the included price. If you sign the lower half, you are not storing anything at Prairie Creek and would not be required to pay the storage fee. Correct. But with so if, if winter storage is not offered, you would not receive this document. Okay. Is so that is because this, so this is essentially an acceptance or a refusal of the option for winter storage. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Another thing is, uh, and Dustin did, and Ashley did um, talk about this, is, you know, with price increase on pe dock piers and campsites, that uh, letters are sent out, like, first part of the year to inform everyone of all of the increases instead of being sent out with their packet. Mm -hmm. That's all I ask about that. It's just, you know, for advance notice for people. Yeah, so I guess um, for advance notice wise, uh, I can review these again. We had a seasonal rate. Now, these are all pending review, discussion, and potential approval, but to get people prepared today instead of finding out in December, seasonal rate proposed is uh, $1,400. $1, hundred and fifty dollars <throat> first golf cart is included second golf cart is a hundred dollars winter storage if offered is two hundred and fifty dollars primitive sites are 13 cabins are 75 RVs are 35 dock prices proposed are 300 for a mooring 500 for a wooden and 625 for a floating so Okay, now is there going to be a different price? You said that the 1450 will it be different for out-of-towners? Or is it going to be one straight for everybody? One we're, straight? Yep, we're moving to a standard rate. rate. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. That helps clean up the paperwork. Definitely. Helps eliminate some of those discrepancies Confusion. on, right. on exactly. property position. So, And we right. don't receive any tax dollars at the Prairie Creek. Sounds great. So. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Meadows. Okay. <clears throat> Joanne Hammond. Um, I actually have pictures. Um, my phone went dead of, of the trees that I'm referring to that are being suddenly cut. Um, my phone went dead. I started emailing them. Thank you. You may have some of them. Um, some of you may have some of them. Some of you may not. Um, I don't even, uh, I don't I'm a mess right now. Um, I'm Thank gonna you. try to give you what I got and hope that all of you get them and you don't because I gotta have a copy. Hey, you guys got a copy. I hate that. Um, do you need a copy of this? No. Okay. I do. I do. I'll get, I'll get you one for us. Okay. Anyways. I don't even know where to start. I don't know where to start. Um, other than the attorney says that I need to move because of trees. Okay. I haven't, I had a tree person come out on Friday and he says the trees are fine. They're, the trees have not been marked by urban forestry to say that they will be, need to be trimmed or cut, there are no markings on the trees anywhere. Um, so you tell me about that one. And uh, you know, you, you, you look at trees, and we're not even supposed to pick a tree up off the ground, that's called molesting them. You know, and when you start cutting a tree that doesn't need cut, you know, you, you put that tree at risk for, for diseases, and you know, it, and, and I've got a man here that, that specializes in trees, and he tells me there's nothing wrong with these trees. And then he also tells me, so I said, okay, sir, if, if these trees, do, if, if, if they were to say, okay, I'm going to just take these, all these trees down, do, does my camper need to move? He said, and, he said, and I said, because this camper right here is going to move out. Because they're moving because they they don't want to camp here no more. It's a camper behind me. And he said, no. He said, you wouldn't have to move. He said, because I can get a bucket truck in right here. Okay. And I said, well, he, I said, he, he said, um, I said, well, is there any tree back here at all that they could say anything about? He said, well, there's this one right here because it leans. And um, I, he said, but I can cut that with a pole saw. He said, but it's, there's nothing wrong with it. He said, all these trees look good. He said, these are locust trees. He said, these are nice, healthy, 
healthy hard trees. These are good trees to have around. He said, there's nothing wrong with these trees. I got his name on there in the time I met him out there. I meant to put his number on there, but I was in a hurry. But you have his name, and um, I can get his number to you. Um, I don't know if you people are the ones that's going to be judging whether or not I get to keep my campsite or not. But if you are, I don't think Brad should be part of the judging. Um, he would be part of the ADA lawsuit. And, and I, I don't really think James Lutton, was you there the day that I paid my rent and that we had the problem? And are you also personal friends with Ashley camping beside her? And, you know, you're, I mean, if you are, I think there's conflict of interest here. Um, so I, I have a real problem with that. I'm sure you would too, you know, under the circumstances. And under the circumstances, I asked for help for 20 some days on my ADA claim that I ended up having to file with the ADA and with the, we all know what's going on, and that your own ADA people have said you violated my rights and you knew about it. You're just as guilty as Ashley and Dustin. You have no right to, to be judging anything to do whether or not I stay in that park. And that's what I'm afraid is going to happen. But anyways, now that we know the trees are safe to stay and that the tree there in my lot can't be ground because he said that there is metal and concrete and it would not be safe to, to ground that stump. And that's what the attorney said, the reason why I'm moving. So um, we can't grind it. So now my camper doesn't need to move. So what now? Does it get a stay? No move, there's no marking. Oh, well, I called my neighbor, first of all, to ask him to, I said, hey, Ike, I need you to go out there and take pictures of those trees to show there's no markings. I come to find out he wanted the trees down. The reason why, so I think he's a driving force behind these trees coming down. He uses the site behind my camper um, to cook because he doesn't want the smoke coming in his camper. Well, um, he does, his wife doesn't like trees at all. He, she doesn't like the shade. So I think that's the driving force behind the trees and some of the other rules that um, were made last year or this year. But um, that's another story. But anyways, um, he said, well, there'll be markings tonight, like that right there. Yeah. So there very well could be. That's why I had my daughter here to go make pictures of the trees tonight. That's, what, oh, that's why I was late. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm dealing with. So, anyways, we might need special board members to help decide whether or not I get to stay or how, whether I have to move my camper. And I think it would be a real bad decision if I did have to move my camper. Um, so, anyways, I'll go back and sit down and let you guys decide what I have to do. I'll be waiting for an email or a letter. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hammond. Thank you. Uh, Mary Sexton is the last one. Hi, I'm Mary Sexton. Um, I just kind of want to, we got the same letter and I just kind of want to go over, um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, just kind of want to go over, um, the main thing that stood out to me was that it says, um, this may cause an inconvenience. However, it is necessary to keep the park safe and enjoyable for all visitors. While winter storage is, um, a privilege, for some, it's a necessity. When we bought, we already had a camper when we um, tried to get a site. We had a, a dock first. We started out there with the boys with the pontoon boat. And then we thought, well, we'll get a camper because it'd be so much fun. And we had some friends out there. And, um, but then we found out if we got the camper, it's very hard to get a site. And what we had to do then in 2012 was wait for someone to sell their camper and then you bought that camper 
even if it was grossly overpriced, and then you transferred it into your, thus, like the law, into your name. So that's what we did in June of um, 2012. And we've been there ever since, and we, since then, um, and it is a maybe a larger one also, and we have um, added patio pavers, spent a lot of money on that. Um, and when we bought it, it's a fifth wheel, and when we bought it, we did not have a means to any vehicle that would pull it. It had been there for I don't know how many years in that spot before we bought it. We still don't have a vehicle. We have had to do the winter storage because we have no way to move it or anywhere to store it. So um, it was really a necessity for us. It wasn't necessarily a choice. Um, so, uh, so it's a let me see burden. where I'm at, sorry. Um, and so, and I think the, the whole 30 day to remove, you know, 10 and a half years of, you know, improvements and whatever, um, it's, it's so unrealistic. Um, my husband has severe health issues, so it would just be me. I work full time. It would be down to the weekends. Well, how many weekends are there in 30 days? There's not very many. And then, you know, if I had my boys help, they both work, go to school. So, you know, it's, it's to me. And that's going to be an awful lot of work for one person to get a patio of pavers dug out of the ground and all that moved. And then what am, we, we live in town. What am I going to do with it all? Why, where, who am I going to get to move my camper that I don't even know if, I mean, there's air in the tires, but I don't even know if it will pull down the road. It's been sitting there for probably at least 15 years in the same spot, you know, not moved. So um, realistically, if this really needed to happen, people should maybe get a letter now and that says, we're gonna have to do these things. And so at the end of next year's season, you need to have everything removed. So not, um, like Jan by January 1st, there's gonna be snow. We live in Indiana. How, how are we gonna, him and I gonna get pavers out, of the, dig them out of the snow in Indiana? So, I mean, I think we need warm weather to be able to realistically move that. Or even if people just have decks, that's gonna be a hardship. It's not an inconvenience. I think an inconvenience is having to pack up your firewood and store it in your garage or something and then having to bring it back and restack it. That's an inconvenience. This is a hardship. Um, and um, like he said earlier, uh, we don't always have to agree, but we do need to work together. And I think that this is just an unrealistic expectation for um, us to be out by the 15th with all of our belongings. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Phyllis, do we have anybody else on the list? No. Anybody else in the audience that have anything to add? Certainly. Uh, let's let uh, this individual speak at, at his comment, and uh, I believe we're going to have some board discussion, and then we'll see what we've got. State your name, please. Yeah, I'm Leonard Lewis, and uh, I just think a lot of the things that are done, the rules they make, should be sent out to everybody that has anything to do with the reservoir. If you got a pontoon, a uh, camper, or whatever. They can send out and let you know that there's a rule. I've been on the list since Ron Bonham was there. And to get a spot, well, it come up that there was a spot right up from my pontoon that I was going to buy the guy's fifth wheel. And I uh, already went to the bank and got the money. Said, Okay, so I called down there and told them I'm buying it. They said, well, you can't do it. You can't have the spot, but you can buy it. I said, what am I going to do with it now? They said, 
That's your problem. So I went and fought and tried and everything, but to no avail. They said, well, that's the rule. I said, but I was on that list. He said, that list, don't, it don't exist. They throw it away. So then they make their own list again, supposedly. And uh, they said, you can get on that and we'll have a lottery. Well, you know, there I am right back at the bottom. And I've been there a long time, I mean, you know. And uh, a friend of mine, I'm not going to mention her name, but they got, went out, got on a lottery, and they got a spot. You know, they said, okay, you can have a spot. Well, there was like six spots open. And they said, uh, she said, okay, which ones are open? Can I'll go pick the one I want. Oh, no, you don't get to do that. You take the one I give you. Now, that's ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, they're all open. Why wouldn't you? You're paying for it. Why wouldn't you take the one you want? I mean, that's like going to a motel and they got 20 rooms open. They don't say, you take the one I want, you know. And as far as cutting trees down and everything, now, they do patrol out there to watch your boat. They can't see my boat because there's five trees out in front of it, seven foot tall. They don't cut them down anymore. I'm afraid to cut it down because if I do, they're going to say I'm destroying the property. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and I know some of the people have got letters to move their stuff because of water pressure. Well, now, if his water pressure's down, everybody says his neighbor's surely down because they're all on the same. But neither neighbor got a letter. You tell me that's right. Something's wrong here. And something definitely needs to be fixed. Yeah, they ought to all get along better than this. It seems to me like, I mean, and I, I'm guilty of saying it. You gotta, you gotta be in the clique, and that's not right. And you know, that's all I got to say. But uh, you know, you want to go steal the motor off my boat? Go ahead. There ain't nobody can see you, even if they drive around looking for it. And you know, I just wanted to say my piece. You know. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Lewis. Thank you for me. Thank you. Thank you. Any others from the audience uh, add anything new? I got one second. One thing, just a second. Yeah, let, let's let Mr. Morris. Morris Russell. Been a long time camper at Prairie Creek, 18 years now. Uh, I'm the one to put on the haunted trail. Okay. I did have permission by previous administration to do so. There was no, there was never any mention that I have to have a, any kind of permit or anything until after I stood up here and spoke to the board about the safety issues in our park. Then all of a sudden, the president here gets a guided tour through the park, showing all the bad stuff that's going on in the park. Was there any good things pointed out? Lots of good improvements that we're working on, yes. <clears throat> that you're working on now, after this has all been brought up. Okay. Shower house, gates, docks, piers, office, lots of already established great right. improvements at the park. The gates are still not operational. They've been in place for two years now. Okay, so... Uh, I was obviously accused of harassing someone. I didn't harass anyone. I were answering posts. People ask me why. They're not the ones that have to answer these kids. Why isn't the trail going on this year? Okay? I'm the one that has to face to face with these kids that are so upset over this thing. There was an inspection done, safety inspection, 
the beginning of spring. After I had to rip everything out the last two weeks of camping season, take my boat out, close my camper down, remove $20,000 worth of decorations out of the woods, okay? No one knew that all that stuff plugs into a 20 amp GFI. Everybody acts like I had high voltage running through the woods, it was on all the time. It's plugged in for two hours a night on a Friday and Saturday night, sometimes on Sundays if there's enough people around. It's under full-time, real-time video surveillance every night so everybody wants to, to say that i put on an unsafe situation yeah they wanted me to bring it up to code all right what is code on an extension cord it's basically all it is an extension cord they took you back and showed you some bare wires yes there's bare wires where it got pulled out of the controllers they lay there all winter long because i don't have time to take all that stuff out Okay, I am not responsible for what other people post. All I try and do is explain to them why it is no longer there. So I think this is very unfair that the facts can be manipulated in someone's favor. I'm not trying to manipulate nothing. I've been up here truthful, I've begged you guys several times over the safety of the lake that gets brushed under the carpet nobody cares there was laws made up over an extension cord that is personal property it has nothing to do with the lake, with the campground infrastructure but that law was enforced with penalty of being expelled which i'm sure this is what's trying to happen right now with our camper being removed so they can do an electrical inspection that had already been extensively inspected this spring. I bring up the issue of the water pressure. Water pressure don't go from 20 PSI to 90 PSI without there being an issue with the well. The well's not on my lot. The spigot isn't even on my lot. It's on the neighbor's lot. So how can they be inspecting the water and the water pressure issues on my lot when it ain't even on my lot. I really think this is being unfair and they're again lashing out. I was told that I can't have my trailer on my lot. Okay, that trailer contained my wife's electric wheelchair and the cart we pull around to do the town festival. So we've done every year for 10 years and it's been there. I bring up the water pressure issue. Now I can't have the trailer on my lot. It can't set across the street from my lot. It has to be in overflow parking and it can only be there temporary. I have to unload it and remove it from the property. Is that fair when even Mr. Lutton's trailer sets in front of his camper half the year? I really, I'm just dumbfounded in the way the city operates. Again, I'm sorry for wasting your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Uh, Mr. President, I think with all due respect to uh, Perry Creek family, the city and the board, Dustin and Ashley, we went through the agenda we went through and answered everything. I think we need to go ahead and call the meeting to, to adjourn. If there's any other questions people have, and that's just with everybody, because everybody has their opinions, and we could be here all night. And I think if we need to set another meeting up to discuss things, but here's a night just to take care of business as it is on the agenda, and then we can follow up with any other issues at some, some later time. So that, as a superintendent, that's what I would say. Appreciate that request, Carl. Um, I think uh, I do want to close the, the microphone for public comment at this time. Uh, does the board have any discussion that we would like to have? Um, how do we want to move forward here? I think that we should all meet and um, together 
and uh, meet with the leadership at Prairie Creek and with Parks leadership and discuss uh, this notice, this um, winter storage notice and see if we could um, ameliorate the situation at least in the uh, short term. Anybody else got any thoughts from the board? I also, I agree. Um, Speak to the mic. I would also like, I agree with, with Shannon and that we could sit with Dustin and Ashley and kind of go through some of these complaints and get um, both sides and a more clear understanding of what is taking place and be able to communicate that to everybody and maybe possibly work something out, um, especially when it comes to, it sounds like the one of the common complaints is the time frame of things. So that would, we need to do a special meeting for that. Uh, today is Tuesday. Um, I think if the board uh, can have a discussion with Dustin and Ashley this week, understand um, the um, the items that we've discussed here a little better, um, and maybe we can even have a resolution uh, by the end of next week. Anybody on the board think that that's not possible? Dustin, Ashley, do you have some time this week to meet with us, either as a whole or individually or pairs? To review and see what other options we may have. We would be very amenable to that. Right. Absolutely. We have given 30 days notice. We would like to stick with that. If we need to have discussion, we will make that time this coming week. Absolutely. And then they still know 30 days. Yeah. I think the one the one thing we would have to be mindful of in me if we meet together with Dustin and Ashley, but if we meet together as a board, it'll have to be noticed as a public meeting. It can be a work session with no public comments, but it will have to be noticed as a public meeting and available if we have more than a quorum. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I, I would anticipate that would be the structure of the meeting, that it would be a work session uh, without public comment. It would be the board and um, the Prairie Creek staff and Mr. Malone as the uh, superintendent as well. Um, Today, uh, notices are as is. Um, today, move forward as um, everything is, uh, but we will address um, this as a board uh, review and see what accommodations and, and things we can uh, work through. Um, any other board? Uh, I'll be in touch with you guys and Phyllis and Carl to see when a day uh, this week or early next week. Um, works for at least a few of us and, and work through that. I think we need 48 hour notice for a public meeting. Yes. Yeah. So if it's more than two of us, it'll be Friday at, at the earliest at this point. So um, that's where we're at with that. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Seeing none, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved. Second meeting is uh, there is currently no scheduled meeting note for November. Um, if that does change, uh, that will be posted accordingly. Next scheduled meeting is in December on 20th. the 20th in this room. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Mm -hmm.